My name is Kim Arkend, and I am the visualization lead for the Chandrix Observatory, which is based at the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I like to think of SAO as a sort of cornucopia of different people who are trying to understand the nature and evolution of our universe. When I was growing up, I didn't particularly have any visible women role models. I didn't particularly care that I hadn't seen these women, but I just thought it was odd. And as a mom of a girl who is interested in science and math, it's just really important being able to provide those role models. One time, I think it was fifth grade for her, I went into her class and I was doing a lesson on the evolution of stars and this idea that, you know, stars live their lives and then end up in some other form. And one of her friends came up to me and at the end of the lesson, she said to me, I didn't know mommies could be scientists. And the fact that she said that out loud and I was able to absorb it, it just hit me that more work needs to be done. As an astronomer, and particularly working with data visualization as my specialty, what I am interested in doing is helping create versions of the data that we can model for either an expert audience or a non-expert audience. I like to consider it telling stories with data. Sometimes that data wants to be in the form of a two-dimensional image. Sometimes that data wants to be in the form of a three-dimensional model. The exciting part is sort of letting the data do the telling. It sort of tells me where it wants to go and what format it'll ultimately take. Chandra is a really cutting-edge piece of equipment, even though we're now 20 years into its mission. The Chandrax Observatory, because it looks at a type of light that we can't see with our eyes, all of that data has to be translated and processed in a way that humans can see. And as that information is collected, it's then it's recorded after the observations, and then from there, it's packaged up into binary code. So just a simple form of ones and zeros. And that data then eventually makes its way through the Jet Propulsion Laboratory before finally coming up here to New England where I get to take a look at it. Some of the projects I'm working on this semester with Kim include building a video of the Chandra telescope and walking through the experience of how the photons get read into the telescope and how scientists process those photons and interpret the data. I'm really thankful for the experience of working with Kim and diving into this space of visualization because that motivated me to explore it more in my later years at Brown. Working with Kim has been like a great experience. And moving forward with my career, I could maybe use my abilities to push for more diversity in the fields that I want to go into, whether it be for underrepresented minorities or genders. I feel like having talented people like myself be able to show others that it's possible is a great, what's the word, motivator. There is this astronaut that worked on the Chandra mission, her name is Eileen Collins, and she was the first woman to command a NASA space mission. That's all her daughter ever knew. And so her daughter literally thought that all moms got to essentially either fly or command NASA space shuttles. There's this idea that science has historically been a single person, typically a man, sitting in a room having this light bulb moment. And while there's, you know, for certainly instances of that, I think science today is this much more collaborative environment where you're working with different groups of people coming from all different backgrounds and all with a slightly different viewpoint on life. It is that idea of many different people trying to add some value and do something for a greater good.